Emily, what is your role at Algo? Yeah, I'm the SVP of product management at Algo. Uh, since Algo is a, I like to call us a scale up company, not a startup, because we're a bit past that, um, but still, you know, scaling up with all of our processes and the like. Um, I wear a lot of hats. So everything from product content uh, around marketing to um, aligning and getting demos and pilots with new prospects to kind of implementing some of the product solutions. So busy Gale kind of end to end, I kind of have a lot of hats, like I said, but see all the different areas of the business and where are their interests from the customers and where can we help them? How did you become interested in this field? Yeah, great question. So I previously worked at some bigger corporations like Best Buy and Disney in supply chain and as a buyer. And so I kind of had, you know, an, as an operator, lots of different understanding of the business. But then uh, as I learned about Elgo and joined the team, uh, now I'm kind of making all the tools I wish I had when I was in all of those roles. So it's really great. And I love that aspect of it. Uh, the other is just the amount of teams that we can help and how much I learn about all the different companies' supply chain. So compared to when I'm in just working, you know, under one company, I kind of have their take of what's the best practice, but being able to work with a lot of retailers and a lot of different suppliers at a macro view, it's really intriguing to be able to see, okay, where are the opportunities, where are there like, you know, problems or how is, who's do something well and how can we, you know, serve that and, and help others in the same space. What are two examples of tools that you've developed that you wish had existed when you were working at, let's say Disney, for example, or any of them and that Algo has? So one of my favorites, I would say, is a lost sales uh, analysis. So it actually shows different products or different store groupings where there are sales opportunities because there's not enough inventory there um, or the mix of inventory is incorrect. And so that I think would have been an awesome tool for me to have because as a buyer or in supply chain, I'm always trying to optimize or sell more product. Like that's what I my job is. So to have a tool to help me do that uh, would be amazing. And then my other favorite I would say is around demand planning. We have a machine learning demand planning tool right now that provides algo um, algorithms uh, proprietary algorithms and in some of my roles I had worked I had hundreds of items that I was forecasting and planning and so to have machine learning to help do you know 80 to 90 percent of the work and I add the last finesse uh, would have been really helpful and um, probably more accurate uh, forecasts, but then also I would have been able to spend more time analyzing and like driving the business than having to go deep in the weeds and pulling spreadsheets together and things like that, which I would say is one of the biggest pieces that we help with. We see a lot of uh, users right now, they just live in spreadsheets and they do VLOOKUPs and they're pulling data together, but that's not really their favorite thing or their job. You know, they are supposed to be driving the business or analyzing it. And in the end, they're having to deal with, deal with a lot of data. Is there something else that people who are ordinarily in the supply chain business that they have to deal with that they don't particularly like dealing with that Algo helps out with? Yeah, that's a great question. So number one is spreadsheets. So I kind of mentioned that. And then the other I would say is uh, probably just how difficult it is to have visibility and collaborate with different segments of the businesses. So spreadsheets is kind of one way, but the amount of email and approvals and uh, comparing numbers to make sure everybody's using the same logic or the same measures, if you will, is like another exercise. So all in all, uh, in supply chain, you probably spend half of your time compiling and comparing data versus Elgo's tools. All of that is validated and done and you can actually start at the point where all of the data is compiled and completed and, and do your job, which is amazing because that's that's what, you know, their core competency and that's what excites them in, in the first place, so. Earlier you mentioned optimization. Now the way that I think of that, and it's probably incorrect, so please just correct it, is and let's imagine you have a boat and there are holes in the boat so you can patch those holes. So let's say you're losing money and you can say, hey, you don't need to, you can mitigate your losses, but you can also make money if you, head in a certain direction. But that I see is not optimization. That I see is opportunities. Now, I don't know. Does Algo see those differently? That is optimization versus giving suggestions to make more money? Hmm, that's a really good question as well. I think 
Optimization, we look at it as both sides, like optimizing when your inventory is constrained and you don't have very much and you need to figure out where to, if you have 10,000 units and you have a thousand stores, you know, where should you put those? The, the poor performing stores get a little bit, the top performing get a lot. So that's kind of one element, which ties to opportunity, I would say, just because if you're putting it in the top performing stores and they sell it, you're mitigating lost sales and you would, you know, end up getting more uh, overall. But then the other flip of the coin is when you aren't constrained and when you have a lot of inventory and you almost have too much, you have to look at the bottom stores anyways to say, should we stop selling them, sending so much to them? Um, how do we move that inventory if it's stuck there and like move it towards the top, even if everybody's selling? So it's kind of both ends of whether you're constrained or you have or unconstrained an in inventory of, you know, where's the best place to do it? You're trying to drive more revenue um, with the constrained or cut costs if you are unconstrained and you have too much inventory in the bottom performing stores. So I kind of see that as a little bit of both. <laughs> Emily, when I was speaking to Amy, perhaps an hour or two ago, she told me an interesting tidbit. Well, it's more than a tidbit. It's that there hasn't been any customer loss in Algo, that all the customers, why do you think that's the case, that the customers haven't left? I think it's a couple of, for a couple of reasons. One, a lot of customers are accustomed, or it's been normalized that software company companies like big ERP companies, they, you know, once you get sticky and have all of the more complex um, system integrations and all those pieces, it takes a lot of time and money to displace them, if you will. And so because of that, they become not very customer friendly. They say, too bad, take this software. If you can't, if you need to get rid of us, fine, but we know that's going to take three years and going to cost you a lot of money. So there's not very much of a feedback loop or kind of customer success focus. But in what Algo, how Algo is different is Algo actually cares about the customer and we are constantly asking for feedback and constantly configuring the software for business needs. So every two weeks we come out with new, rele new releases of software and that just helps ensure that they are at the head of the curve of Omni channel. So whether there are, you know, uh, online sales that are happening or different glo global avenues that are popping up. That's, I think, so part of the secret sauce at Elgo is just the fact that we stay so close to the customer. And as they have different business needs, we are configuring and, and keeping up with them compared to bigger ERPs or bigger software. They just have your, you know, box of inventory or a box of software, I should say, and that's it. And then if you want an update, it might come six months to a year from now. So, you know, that it's a long time, a lot changes in the world between six months to a year to, to implement, but at Algo, we implement so quickly and can iterate and take feedback. So I think that's one of the main reasons is we're constantly listening and helping and supporting the customers. Let's say in the past year or so, what's an example of a piece of feedback that you've received frequently? Like what is a common piece of feedback that you've been able to fix? And then what have the results been of that change? Yes. So I would say one of the feedback elements we have uh, would be there's so many reports and there's so much information. And I don't know, I don't have time to hunt and peck to find information about my business or where there's business opportunities. That's something we hear often of everybody has a lot of analytic tools, a lot of reporting, but they don't have the time to drill into it um, and go hunting for information. So I would say where Elgo has helped solve that, it's actually in two ways. One is in advanced analytics, where we provide anomaly detection, exception reporting to say, like I was mentioning, like lost sales, these are your top five items, these are your top 100 stores, where if you address these, it's going to really make an impact to the business. So you're moving from reporting to more actionable, you know, highlighting exceptions in that space. And that I think has been very successful and very helpful for the teams to focus. Then the other solution that we have that addresses that problem would be with our virtual assistant. And I think you might be talking to Nudjem, who is fantastic on that front of um, NLP, natural language and such. Uh, but that tool is where you can actually ask a question, like the Siri for your business, if you will, to say like, what 
was the sell through for last week for a particular retailer. And it'll actually tell you that number and give you a report filtered with that information. So again, no longer having to hunt through different reports, you're able to ask questions and get answers right away. So those that would be an example, I would say, of something we hear as a frequent pain point that Elgo has some really great solutions for. What else is one of the major challenges that, let's say, someone who comes to you as a prospective customer has that they, for whatever reason, can't find a solution elsewhere? Like, what is it that sets Algo apart that solves a particular challenge? So I would say the number one, um, there's kind of twofold to that. One is the challenge that they have is they're trying to either grow revenue or cut inventory costs. Like that's, you know, it's financials. It comes Uh down to the Uh business financials. But in order to do that, in order to have the tools to have a digital transformation, you have to have a foundational data layer. And that is where the challenge is for a lot of companies. They have fragmented data and different systems, whether it's globally, where each country has a different ERP system or a different analytics system, um, or throughout their supply chain of their supply planning team uses a different system than their demand planning team versus their channel operations. And so uh, they are just challenged because everything's so fragmented and they have a hard time finding a partner that's willing to be kind of data agnostic to take that all together. Because a lot of software companies, they just want to protect themselves and they just want to only ha- you know help with in their confines of their specific you know, area versus Elgo is more data agnostic. So we're willing to take on the different country system inputs and the different end-to-end supply chain data inputs and such, and also mm-hmm. kind of map that all together and bring it all together using our professional services. So I'm not sure if the team has talked about that at all, but what that means is we have digital transformation captains, like perf- um, experts that are operators like me, where they've been in the business chair, they know what they need to do, but then they also have more of a technical and data understanding. So they can kind of bridge that gap that a lot of companies have of even a silo between their IT companies and data, as well as their business teams who actually are running supply chain. And so Elgo helps on a couple of fronts. Like one is the professional services of like bringing everybody together and knowing how to pull all of those pieces in, as well as the actual software um, can also be agnostic and kind of collectively bringing all of those pieces together uh, and sit on top of it. So we don't displace ERP systems, but we kind of sit on top and all of those different streams come in um, for demand planning, for example, all those inputs and then Elgo produces a machine learning forecast, and that might be fed into a different downstream system. But it's really kind of helping consolidate all of that and through the means of people, people and software. Now, speaking of this consolidation, how is it practically speaking that you bring these two different ordinarily isolated groups like IT and then the business people together? Is it with weekly calls that have all of them on the team? Do you have a report that's for both of them so they all read the same source? Like Specifically speaking, how is it that you bring them together? So I would say a couple of ways. One is having uh, aligned upon a certain goal or project and scope of project. So that's very important. And then depending on uh, where the different tasks within the project, sometimes it's working with an individual group like just IT or just the business team. But then there's also times when we would collaborate and bring all of those teams together. I would say, you know, part of it is weekly calls would be a method um, in which that is completed. But then also we bring kind of our best practices together and kind of have a specific roadmap or project plan to make sure we have a checklist of everything that needs to happen and, and what milestones and in what order. So that would also be kind of Elgo's secret sauce, if you will, of kind of a playbook of how to uh, accomplish a digital transformation and how to engage and, and collaborate with those different teams. We, In the end, we end up knowing, I would say, the business team's processes and data sometimes better than they do <laughs> as we see it all fit together. So we often are you know, making recommendations and uh, we really like to be an extension of of those partners, to be honest. We, we like to be you know, included in an extension of them. <laughs> Emily, thank you so much. Excellent, yeah, you bet, this was fun. <laughs>